Hello and welcome to another episode of Copper Bottomed, the show all about copper. Uh, today is a leap year, um, a leap year, it's a leap day, the 29th of February. Um, I've only seen 14 of them um, and I won't see another one for four years and I'm, I've am i been ill for a week and so I've been flat on my back. Some of the graphics in this presentation for some reason are a bit weird because I was working on my laptop from bed. Um and I'm off to the PDAC tomorrow. Um, I've actually got three weeks of uh, news releases in this one. So um, uh, quite a lot to get through. I pulled off this copper price graph uh, probably a week ago now. But I think that, you know it, it more or less reflects where we are in the, in the copper market. I think it's been as high as $3.85 um, per pound today. Um, essentially range bound. Uh, tightness in the supply side matched by pretty weak economic uh, environment out there, particularly in China. So uh, I, I don't expect the copper price to do much in the short term. Um, but the, as I said, it's supply constrained and structurally supply constrained. So in the longer term, the only way that you're going to get new production coming on is through higher prices. And um, I saw this chart on Twitter, which is quite interesting. This is um, from Rio Tinto, Bingham Canyon is one of their mines. It's been going forever since 1900. And you can actually see the decline in production. These A lot of the big copper mines globally are old and they're tired and they they just can't go on forever. So um, we need companies out there exploring. We need companies out there um, developing assets. Um, one of the companies that I meant to cover in the exploration uh, uh, portion last week was hot chili um i went back to look at their exploration but there was actually a subsequent uh news release which was possibly more interesting which is that they've just put out a new um resource at their costa fuego copper gold project so here we are uh let's have a quick look at um hot chili a uh, market capitalization around 106 million dollars canadian um it's actually quite a good share price performance over the last uh 15 months uh, yes, it's down from the highs of twenty uh, early 2023, but since the low last July, they're actually on an upward trajectory, as you would expect for a quality team operating in Chile. Um, it's kind of a slightly gimmicky name, and um, the management team is based in Australia, so it can sometimes feel as if it gets a little bit lost, uh, falls between the cracks. However, Let's have a look at this. So they've got a total mineral resource of 800 million tonnes in the indicated category um, with 2.9 million tonnes of copper and 2.6 million ounces of gold with some silver and some molly. And in the inferred category, only 200 million tonnes. So they've done a lot of work to pull 800 million tonnes into um, the indicated category category with um 200 million tons in the res in the inferred category at a much lower grade, it has to be said. So that's, um, you know, 30% lower grade. But we're talking pretty much um, combined about a billion tons of material here. Now, interestingly, they've got a high grade uh, resource in the middle of this, 173 million tons at 0.78% copper equivalent. Um, I don't know what the exact copper grades are, but there's a million tons of copper and a million ounces of gold. So that's pretty good. Um, going through the news release, I found it quite hard to work out where it sits. Where does this high-grade mineral resource sit? And I think it sits in Cortadera. Actually, if you look at the the the, the plan for hot chili, this this news release basically took two years to produce. This is two. This is the culmination of two years' work. The, the, these are major engineering projects. A copper mine is a major engineering project. You've got. Um, uh, a pipeline easement, you've got a kind of a power line um, easement. Getting all those permits and um, planned is, is a significant job in themselves. You've got the the, the tenement holdings. Um, the basic rule of thumb on a open pit operation is that the footprint of your open pit, your pit shell, um, whatever the size that is, you need about 10 times that area for waste dumps and tailings dams. Um, now, within Costa Fuego, you've actually got three resources. You've got Productora, Cortadera, and San Antonio. And I think um, Productora is actually two. There's, there's something called the Alice 
um, ore body as well. So you're actually dealing with four little separate pits. What I thought was really super interesting on this resource, and obviously a pre-feasibility study is going to come out at some stage. Here we go in the second half of 2024. But it's almost as if the consensus price at the moment is $3.90 and that you're really, really going to be looking at $4 plus when it comes to a development decision. And if you look at this pit here, this pit shell here, this is the old $4 pit shell. Sorry, this is the not the old one. This is the new $4 pit shell. And you can see that that pulls right down and takes in all of this material that would otherwise be in a block cave. So um, I think that this is going to be a super pit by the time it push comes to shove, because I think the metal price is going to be um, above $4 by the time this comes through to um, uh, production. So that's really, really good work. I expect the trajectory to continue. Keep going hot, um, chilly. You've got years of difficult work ahead of you, um, but you seem to be doing the right engineering work, and it, it should be rewarded in the share price. Uh, I, I like this a lot. Oh, another thing which is really interesting <laughs> I saw on this news release. Okay, so they're very close to the coast, which is really good. And look, they're down at about 700 meters above sea level. But look at this profile. This is chilly for you. So you go from the coast, ding, 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 up into the Andes. And there's the watershed between Chile and Argentina. And there's Filo del Sol up at 4,200 meters. And the thing about operating at 4,200 meters is that you've got to pay time and a half for your people and your engines and your motors and everything runs at 20% um, less efficient or 25%. The, 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 all of your kit works less well up at that altitude. Plus, you've got thousands of kilometers to get to the Atlantic. Um, but, and it's Argentina. But um, that being said, here we are hot chili, down on the plains, all good. Right. So well done, hot chili. Important to see these um, these resource estimates. I haven't gone through everything in full detail, but a quick glance, it looks really good. Right. Now, the, the weekly highlights uh, from the 10th of February, the 17th of February, and the 24th, Aldebaran, Tribeca, T2, skip on GSP. It was $2 million market capitalization and no liquidity uh, and a tiny intersect. Uh, Minsud Resources, uh, Double View, we're going to skip that. That's a Scandian project. Corex, we'll mention very briefly, and Barksdale. Funnily enough, I, I covered Barksdale last week, but I for some reason I pulled out the wrong... Um, I covered it last time, but I pulled out the wrong news release. I don't know how I did that, but anyway, we can look at their recent results, which are not uh, particularly edifying. And then we come into the land of the big guys, the big guns. We've got Philo, Atex, NGX, Faraday, Ivanhoe, and Foran, and um, we're going to skip the Caribou Rose. But um, Philo's $2.3 billion, Atex is a um, couple of hundred million dollars, NGX, one point something billion dollars, Faraday, a couple of hundred million dollars, Ivanhoe, $800 million, Foran, $1.3 billion. These are some big companies. So um, straight into the exploration Right, um, Alderbaran. It's a funny company, this, with John Black and Kevin Heather. Uh, they're good guys. Um, the Altar Deposit. They, too, have just been on a kind of a steady upward trend. Um, lost a bit of momentum recently, but the markets have been particularly harsh. They've got uh, an extraordinarily supportive shareholder register, and they never really seem to run out of money. Um, and they're free to do some good geology. It's a complex area, this project. They've got um, Enargite, which is a um, a tricky copper mineral with arsenic. Um, they've got the central zone. They've got Alta North. They've got the telegraph part. But I think what the most interesting thing about this news release, and these are the, the three uh, four holes which are in the red here. These were released today. Nice plan. These guys really know what they're doing. Um, is that they weren't they weren't drilling for the porphyry intrusions in, so they due to snow constraints, these were significant step outs to test for the southern extension of mineralization within the large conductive geophysical anomaly at Altar. Okay, so they're just testing a geophysical anomaly, but they hit low to moderate grade mineralization in wall rocks, andesites, and rhyolites. 
that will add resources to a previously undrilled area. This is low-grade stuff, but actually not that low-grade. It's it, This is really good volume-adding material. They were designed as waste. Um, um, sorry, they were designed to test an area that was um, currently defined as waste. And look, you know, 879 meters of 033 two percent copper equivalent i don't know what these are in in, in real terms but um as annoying as it is to have not have the copper grade um i think the, the important thing is this is wall rock alteration which is a real testament to the strength of the overall system so um for a um kind of an in a, a, a filler news release um it's not bad it's really not bad right onwards next uh tribeca resources Okay, Tribeca Resources, uh, market capitalization, $14 million, very, very illiquid share price. Look at that. Um, uh, okay, this is, the, this is the bit that they've only been listed for. But um, Paul Gao, Thomas Schmidt, I speak to um, Thomas. He's, um, he's exploring in Chile, as indeed am I. Um, I've been exchanging emails with Paul Gao. I'll be meeting him next week. We're going to kind of compare notes on the exploration that we're doing in Chile. What a nice guy these guys are. They're really, really super. I think I've commented in the past that they seem to be kind of quite hemmed in on the western boundary here. And I think there's a road as well, which kind of further constrains things. But I'll I'll ask them in person. Um, but really what we've they've done here is with um, GBY013, they've extended the mineralization to the north. Lots of lots of sniffs. Dr. Gao says, with these latest results, we've significantly grown what is now a meaningful, shallowly covered copper gold system in a great location and jurisdiction, near abundant existing infrastructure and located only 10 kilometers from the coast. They've added approximately 40% to the strike length of the known system. It's currently being integrated with existing data sets to clearly understand the controls on mineralization and plan for further drilling at this emerging discovery. Yeah, because, you know, 105 meters at 0.18, it shows that there's mineralization in this in the area, but it's not really what we're after. Um, we want this to be leading on to better grades. Um, you know, that was a cracker, 268 meters at 0.66% copper and 0.14 gold. So more like that. It's hard. It's hard, but um, they're doing the right things. Right. Um, T2 Metals. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. I, oh, I forgot to reduce the font size. <laughs> okay. This is what comes from working when you're kind of lying down in bed. Um, T2 Metals reports additional high-grade metallic polymetallic drill results at its Sheridan VHMS Project Manitoba. 10 meters at 27 um oh my god i can't read it it's so big um sheridan well-known camp yes the q4 drill programs for 12 holes drilled with 10 intersecting intervals of semi-massive or massive sulfide that's good the second set of results includes four shallow holes from lost lake and it's these ones um these are the four shallow holes these are previously reported um with very high grades of copper and zinc over significant widths and they are so this is mark saxon and crew market capitalization four million dollars it's a micro cap but i like the geology look at this um 0.9 percent copper um four and a half meters at 0.9 3.7 meters at 1.77 7 point um almost eight meters at two percent with zinc um those zinc figures there uh and a nice a nice kicker from gold you know this is the, the these are these are good grades this is good exploration very early stage but don't write this thing off there's only four million dollars but um when they rattle a tin and they want to get some more shells on board i think this is this is worth continuing it's it's uh, it's really good early stage exploration results right um okay Whew. on to the subsequent week minsud resources these guys have got a market capital of, um, of 156 million dollars super share price chart Remember that they've sold half of their project to South 32. Um, it was a hugely long and long-winded um, uh, news release. I ended up cutting loads of loads of bits out. Um, they were very unclear about their whole numbering. It, 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 it was a very, very unfriendly news release. Um, 
But be all that said and done, the intercepts are quite good. I like the way they just report the grades, 0.43% copper, 0.19 gold uh, for 550 meters from 246. That's not too deep. Um, 386 at 0.27 with 0.07 from 458. That's okay. 194.27 plus 0.03. It's kind of, it's part of the system. So they said our ongoing drilling program focus on the uh, Chinchillones target continues to prove to be highly successful in defining further mineralization. True. They can uh, look forward to continuing the program into 2024 towards the generation of an NI43101 mineral resource estimate on the project following the completion of the program. Fine. It's all good work. Market capitalization, about 156 million. So because they've got half of this, you know, it's kind of 250 to 300 million dollars. Let's call it 200 to 250 if in, in, in US dollars. It's probably about right for a project to this this scale. It feels serious. It feels like the real deal. I can't see a catalyst to kind of give it a step change, but I I, I can see that this is well supported given the fundamentals of the mineralizing system, even though it's in Argentina, um, just because it's copper and going in the right direction with serious partners. Corex Copper, they put out another drill release saying that they hit the same degrade mineralization as they were expecting. Fine. Market cap $16 million in Namibia, the Hybe project. Next. Barksdale. Right, I missed them last week, or rather I, I spoke about their asset in, in Mexico. In fact, they are um, on the sunny side, they're looking for carbonate replacement deposits down at depth. These are super, super deep. It was a very, very strange kind of target and strategy that, you know, for a junior company with this tiny market capitalization to go exploring for a super deep kind of shoot the lights out, high risk exploration and getting results which don't really make it. So um, Rick Trotman says, we're excited to share the initial assay results that includes high-grade copper from drill hole Sun 3. Yeah, but these are down at, look look at, look at the depths here, 1,400 meters, 1,400 meters, 1,400 meters. This is too deep. There's not enough metal too far from the surface. I'm sorry. Um, and you can see that reflected in the share price. Uh, I don't think it's the right strategy for a junior exploration company, but they are finding that out the hard way. Um, by the way, if I, get, if I have got this wrong and I'm insulting uh, by... An, um, unintentionally uh, a company then I'm of course most welcome I would most welcome a dialogue with the um, executives of that company to come and explain to me how I've got this wrong right um, Philo um, we're into the third week of results um, this came out on the 22nd of February Philo 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 my goodness look at this um, holds from 97 98 and 100 97 was a thousand meters at 0.89 percent copper 98 was 954 meters at 0.42 percent copper equivalent okay and hole 100 was 631 meters at 0.68 you know it's like when you go i don't know if you've ever been on safari but the first time you see a lion you go oh look there's a lion um and by the end of three three days you know you're 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 dancing the lions what you really want to see is an elephant or kind of a lion eating a wildebeest or something or a crocodile eating a zebra you know, you, you become slightly inured to the majesty of the jungle or the or the savanna and that's what we've become at philo oh look it's just another kilometer long hole with consistent mineralization um and it it's worth reading these quotes by jamie beck the president and ceo who says these three holes span a distance of 1.6 kilometers and expand the deposit to the west along that entire distance. Hole 100 is a perfect example of our successful Aurora Zone exploration step-out drilling. It adds over 500 meters in depth beyond our current resource pit shell and extends the western margin of the deposit by 250 meters. So, um, and they drilled 5,400 meters in January. So, I mean, this thing continues to grow It'll continue to be fantastic. The market capitalization is $2.84 billion. So, And as I said last time, it's hard to make an elephant gallop. But um, these, these companies are phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. 
Right, another one. Um, Atex Resources, market capitalization, um, just under $200 million Canadian. A super price chart. Look at that. Um, and this is a really, really interesting news release, I think. Um, Atex expands the high-grade early porphyry at Valeriano by intersecting 112 meters of 1.42% copper equivalent within a longer interval of 850 at 0.82%. Now, I've been a little bit sniffy about Valeriano because of the depth. I mean, look at this. This is just a schematic image um, grabbed from their um, from their news release. The, the quality is not that great, but you can see that this is the 4,200 meter level here, at this level here, and this is the 2,700 meters level here. So this is 1.5 kilometers of vertical extent, which is def of... of um, you know, difference. And so you're up at four and a half, five thousand meters drilling away, and you've got to go through a kilometer or more of barren material before you get into the mineralization. But look, this is the um where's the early po the early porphyry? I can't quite work it out. I can't quite see where it is. But um in plan view, these are the early porphyry shells that they're, they're talking about the early porphyry interpretation at 2750 meters level so that's the that's the plan view and having that early porphyry at a much higher grade transforms the economic potential of this I mean, the difference between a 0.3 or a 0.2% um bit of mineralization and something which is grading 0.8 or 1.2% is just phenomenal. So I think this is an emerging, really important story within ATEX. And I think it could create a step change from the $200 million level up to something, you know, a fair bit higher. So um, Raymond Janus, and remember, you've got guys like Pierre Lassonde in here, who's got a pretty stellar um, shareholder register. These results are among the most exciting delivered to date by the Valeriano project. I agree. I agree. We've delivered one of the highest grade and longest intervals in the project in ATXD16A, which combined with the other holes from phase four, specifically ATXD25, has highlighted the potential for north-northwest trending EP early porphyry corridor that likely hosts a larger early porphyry target than originally anticipated. This trend remains open to long strike, and we're actively drilling to infill gaps and expand the high-grade early porphyry system. Watch this space. I don't think this is going south. I think this is going north. Um, interesting. Right. NGX Minerals. My goodness, another corker. $1.6 billion. Look at that share price, and it's still going up. It's still going up. The trend is your friend, my friend. Uh, 23 meters at 23% copper equivalent. Actually, if you look at the table, it's 23 meters at um, 11 or 12 percent copper with the rest in a lot of it in gold yeah these copper equivalent figures are kind of an oversimplification and the other thing i noticed is the estimated true widths of the intersections and the breakdown of the individual metal grades um the true widths it's almost half so it's um between 50 and 60 percent of the intersected so this 102 meters i think is 60 meters this 46 meters at 2% is 23 meters or something like that. And this 23 meters is 12 meters. You know, the the the, the true widths are quite a, a, a cut down. But just, I only mention that just to stop you getting completely carried away with this because this, this is spectacular and they will find more and it's going in the right direction. Um, so uh, Voitex says, Luna Wasi continues to explain exceed our expectations and these new holes have delivered some of the longest highest grade combined copper gold and silver intersections seen globally for a long time it's true it's true these are really really spectacular the deposit remains open in all directions and is rapidly turning into a major new discovery it's true yeah it's true in addition to the high grades and individual structures we are starting to see long intervals of stock work and disseminated mineralization towards the western part of the deposit i expect their booth to be swamped at PDAC, and I hope that they are included in the in the core shack because I'd love to go and look at some of this core. Absolutely, good. I salute you, Faraday Copper. Strange one, this um, kind of a complicated multi-asset um, 
multi-resource kind of um, cobbled together play. Um, 161 meters, 163 meters at 085 percent copper within 380 at 0. 0.62. That's good. That's good. Four holes at phase three program at the Copper Creek. Um, Paul Harbord said the drill results of the two holes confirm the existence of zones in the underground domain with higher grades than predicted from the resource model. So I, I went and had a look at this. They've got a market capitalization of 84 million dollars and they're losing momentum. You know, 20, the last 12 months have been a pretty kind of torrid time for the company. They put out a, a I think it was a PEA, which showed some pretty average uh, or low uh, IRR numbers and big CapEx numbers. And I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to rejig the exploration. I think they're trying to um, see if they can skin this particular cat in a different uh, way. And uh, it feels as if they were kind of, they, they went into a, Pre PEA kind of an economic study without, well, in the hope that it would give the right answers, and it hasn't, and therefore now they're trying to backtrack and um, reorganize the exploration. Um, I think this is going to be hard work. Um, I haven't met Paul Harbridge. I have got no um, axe to grind at all. I wish them the best, but I can't see how it's going to be easy. This just just feels complicated and difficult. But I. Um, I stand to be corrected if they ever come and speak to me. Right, Ivanhoe Electric. Oh my goodness. $1.2 billion company which behaves like a Canadian junior. The share price would indicate that the, the market is beginning to catch up with my um, low opinion of this terrible company. Oh, terrible is the wrong word. Um, strange company. Um, I, 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 I looked at their news release and I copied it and pasted it and it was I, I couldn't make head nor tail of it it's just kind of um, it's word soup it's kind of just like kind of a bingo uh, um, verbal incontinence which just kind of comes out in this kind of great soup of um, buzzwords um, ex update on exploration drilling recent drilling at Santa Cruz confirms continuity of high grade copper mineralization intersects widespread porphyry style sulfide mineralization extends mineralization uh, there's there's very little data there are no maps there's no cross sections there's it's uh, well there are but the, it, it's very hard to work out what's going on anyway avoid avoid uh unless someone can come on and explain to me and can someone can write a kind of a, a comprehensible comprehensive um and comprehensible news release uh, I, I worry about this company. I, th I should imagine that that $1.2 billion would, is going to trend much closer to um, Arizona Snoran's $120 million or $150 million. So um, uh, th 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 there's, there's a long way down from here. There's a long way down from here. Um, right, next, foreign mining. What a fantastic job these guys have done in getting that market capitalization up at $1.26 billion. These guys are the absolute masters of managing their share price. Um, and I don't mean that in a critical sense in that they market incredibly effectively and they know exactly who they're going to be pitching to and they uh, sell brilliantly well. Um, $3.79 a share, really, really, really superb. About four or five months ago when I covered Foran first on Copper Bottom, I wrote to... Um, one of their major shareholders uh, saying, I didn't like the way they reported their results. And I'm very happy to say that they responded um, and they put in the the metals, 1.03% copper, 2% zinc, a little bit of silver, a little bit of gold, but they don't include the depths. They don't include the depths, which I, I did ask for. Um, but I... In fact, I, I don't think they've included it on the front, front page. You can't actually tell how deep this thing is, but it's it's a, a, it's over a kilometer deep. But uh, they are finding consistent mineralization. So let's see what they say. Tesla winter drilling expands the strike length beyond a thousand meters, and now exceeds the parameters of the modeled conductor assays. Pending on intersections outlining shallower mineralized potential, Tesla zone continues. Uh, to remain open in all directions. Oh, sorry. Um, assay is pending on the intersection, so I should have put a break in there. Right. So they've got six rigs currently drilling. That's my emphasis. I put the bold on there. Four drigs, four drill rigs are on 
the main Tesla zone, and two rigs are on the bridge zone. So in this bit here, this is the bridge zone. Sorry that some of the labelings dropped away here. The VP of X, so the VPX said the 24, um, 2024 winter drill program has started on a good note. Significant strike extension of the Tesla zone. Now measuring over one kilometer long. Tesla is rapidly expanding beyond our expectations as a zone of strategic importance for future growth initiatives. Initiative. Yeah, I mean, as I said, these guys have got a f- fabulous market capitalization, which means that their paper is not... Uh, it means that they can do non-dilutive um, equity issues, which means that they can build this without too much dilution. So I salute them for that. Um, and these guys really know how to manage their lives. So well done them. Right. That is it. That is it. We are done. I will see you guys in a few weeks time. I've got a pretty hectic schedule for the next uh, two or three weeks, but I expect I will squeeze in another copper uh, bottomed uh, episode in the second half of March. Until then, keep yourself safe, keep investing in copper, keep looking at expiration results critically and enjoy yourself and go well. Thank you very much.